Foxy, easily one of FNAF's first favorite characters. Since FNAF 1, Foxy has always been unique, being on a separate stage from the other characters, sporting novel accessories and seeming to be more passive than the others at times, but by no means is he a simple character. In this video, I'll be looking at Foxy's mysterious past and uncovering everything we missed, including solving why he's out of order in the first game and why he may have been withered long before the other animatronics, plus possibly confirming one of the very first FNAF theories. This is The Truth About Foxy. Let's go over a brief history of the character. Foxy first appeared in 1983 as a pirate-themed fox at the first Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. After the MCI, the restaurant was closed and reopened a few months later in 1987 with a new cast of improved animatronics. Here, Foxy was the only one of the original four to endure a massive change, becoming a sort of clown and perhaps even a female. After that restaurant was closed, Foxy was brought back in the final Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, but was labeled out of order as far as we know. So we clearly have a lot of gaps in Foxy's story. We know that he was twitchy and was replaced for being too scary, but we don't know why. What does Phone Guy tell us about Foxy? After all, Foxy was always his favorite, and most of our exposition already comes from his phone calls. The first time he mentions Foxy is in FNAF 2, the earliest game in the timeline to mention the original animatronics. While reminiscing about his love for the old characters, Phone Guy draws attention to Foxy, saying that he was always a bit twitchy. So what does he mean by this? This behavior might be one of the hints that the withered animatronics go on to become the FNAF 1 animatronics, and Phone Guy is simply describing the same behavior we saw Foxy exhibit in the previous game. However, whether or not this twitchy behavior was carried over after the FNAF 1 restoration, we know that this is something that goes back to Foxy's creation. Knowing this, let's go back earlier in the timeline to see what we can find out about this behavior. The earliest appearance of Foxy that I can think of is technically his appearance in Fredbear and Friends back in 1983. In this vintage cartoon from the Fredbear era, we see five characters, Fredbear, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Now, we don't know for sure if Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was opened at the time of this show's airing, but given the characters and the way they're portrayed, I'd say it's fair to assume that the restaurant was open. Notice how the animatronics are portrayed. Freddy, the band's singer, Bonnie, the guitar player, Chica, who's always holding her cupcake, and Foxy, who has a hook. The first question I have regarding Foxy's depiction in this cartoon is why does he share a slide with Fredbear? Every other character gets their own frame where they can display their distinguishing traits, like the Power Rangers or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So what does this tell us about Foxy? Honestly, not much. This could indicate that Foxy was not a favorite at the time and that the show put him alongside Fredbear to make him appear more interesting, but we can't support this idea. All of the evidence we have points towards Foxy generally being very well received, so why else would he be on the same slide as Fredbear? Honestly, I don't have a compelling answer at the time, but I also don't think this detail is very important to our focus. One thing I will bring up is that Foxy may be the only original character on the show. Fredbear is already an established character, thus the title Fredbear and Friends, which introduces four new characters. Freddy, who's a recolor of Fredbear, Bonnie, who's a recolor of Spring Bonnie, Chica, who may have had her own restaurant, Chica's Party World, at some point, and Foxy, who is a completely novel character. I don't know how this relates to him him being on the same slide as Fredbear in the show, but it is interesting. I also want to add that this may not be a show at all, but rather a commercial. Obviously, the models aren't very detailed, so we can't tell if they represent real animatronics or toys, but this image of Bonnie is the same image used later to depict a child's toy, even appearing on the same grassy background. Based on these complicated details, as well as the fact that I don't consider this to be helpful in solving our mystery, let's move on to something that may actually be useful. Let's look at Foxy Go Go Go, an event that I believe happened in the same year as the Fredbear and Friends cameo, 1983. This minigame is theorized to depict the MCI, which based on the FNAF 1 newspapers most likely occurred in 1983. I just posted a full video on that if you're curious as to how I got to that conclusion. Anyways, this is the earliest depiction of Foxy that we have, so what can we take from this? For one, Pirate's Cove appears to be in service, which tells us that we're right in the range we're looking for, sometime before FNAF 2. You can also see that Foxy is already withered, which is strange for a number of reasons. First, this minigame seems to depict an operational Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, so why is Foxy withered and in use? From what we know from the first two games, it's usually one or the other. Either the animatronics are withered and not in use, or are not withered and are in use. So why is Foxy running out on stage with his endoskeleton showing? We know that this restaurant was left to rot for quite a while, but that was years after the MCI. So Foxy was withered at the first restaurant before it went out of business. This is important information. In my Easter egg video, I mentioned that this mini game could be showing why Foxy runs down the hall in FNAF 1. As seen in Foxy Go Go Go, Foxy runs from his stage into a room full of children, similar to how he runs from his stage into the only room with a person in it in the first 
first game. This minigame, backed by his behavior in the first game, indicates that Foxy was programmed to run out from behind his curtain. This explains why he's always withered. His fabric legs were constantly being bent and stretched in ways that his primitive design couldn't handle. Based on what we know from FNAF 2, Fazbear Entertainment's technicians are very quick to give up on repairing their animatronics, especially when it comes to Foxy. And by very quick, I mean extremely quick. FNAF 2's ending newspaper tells us that the restaurant was only open for a few short weeks, and yet the staff stopped trying to put Toy Foxy back together at some point. Mind you, this is also four years later when the company upgraded to newer, state-of-the-art animatronics. So you can imagine when it was just William and Henry working out of their garages, they wouldn't have been able to keep up with Foxy's repairs. This is probably the same reason he's out of order in the first game. We know that restaurant was thrown together using basically everything the company already had lying around, so it makes sense that rather than completely reworking Foxy, they'd simply keep his exhibit closed. I also believe that FNAF 1 takes place in a refurbished version of one of the old locations, possibly the restaurant where Foxy Go 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 is set, which is something I discussed in my FNAF 3 Follow Me theory. That would explain why there even is a Pirate's Cove in the restaurant, considering that it was likely never functional. That much is pretty speculative using deductive reasoning and information from the Silver Eyes, in which John mentions that he had a birthday party at Freddy's years ago and Foxy was out of order then too. Now that we know why Foxy is withered in the first pizzeria, let's see if we can connect it to anything else we're missing. Well, we know that Foxy was replaced by Funtime Foxy, or Toy Foxy, in the 1987 restaurant because the company thought he was too scary. So besides the obvious answer, what made Foxy too scary for the new restaurant? First, we know that all of the animatronics were remade for this restaurant, but Phone Guy specifically mentions that they remade Foxy. Most of the characters were basically just remade as toy versions of their original models, while Foxy was recolored and moved from Pirate's Cove to Kid's Cove. So what caused this change? In the Silver Eyes, the kids make fun of Carlton, who used to hide from the animatronics in the main show area. Charlie, on the other hand, is said to have hidden under tables in Pirate's Cove. Even Jessica, the one poking fun at the other kids for being scared, acts reluctant when about to pull back a curtain to reveal Foxy. Foxy, by the way, exhibits withering very similar to his FNAF 1 counterpart in this book. So could the reason Foxy was considered too scary be because he always had bits of his metal endoskeleton exposed? Based on Foxy Go Go Go, we know the kids had seen Foxy while his legs were completely devoid of fabric. Furthermore, this was apparently before the MCI and before the restaurant began rotting while its business plummeted. This idea is also backed by the state of the withered animatronics. Foxy is by far the most withered of the four. Oh, oh, okay, all right. What I mean is that his fabric has the most significant damage of the four. We know that technicians began upgrading these animatronics for the second restaurant before abandoning that project, which could explain some of the missing parts, such as Bonnie's face and Chica's hands. But Foxy Go 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 shows us that Foxy has pretty much looked like this since as early as 1983. That means that he may have become withered soon after the restaurant opened and long before any of the other animatronics, causing kids to find him creepy because they could see his skeleton through gaps of torn fabric. Of course, the underlying reason that he was deemed too scary could have been the fact that he had a hook hand and an eye patch, but we also know that he'd run out on stage with his skeleton poking through his skin. Now, why does Phone Guy say that Foxy was always twitchy? Since we know that Foxy has always been twitchy, we should look to his past for clues as to what may have caused this behavior. I believe the answer also lies within Foxy Go Go Go. Given that the MCI likely happened in 1983, less than a year after the restaurant opened, that would place this minigame sometime early in the restaurant's history. Also, knowing that these minigames are often more symbolic than one-to-one -one recreations of the events they depict, what can we gather from this game? The main details of this minigame are that Foxy runs out from a purple curtain into a room of happy children, and that eventually he runs out into a room full of corpses. I've already used the former to explain why Foxy's damaged and why he runs down the hall in the first game, but I believe the latter may be even more important. Based on my recent MCI theory, I came up with an order in which I believe the MCI victims were killed. Aside from Cassie, who's always been sort of isolated from the rest of the spirits, Fritz is the last victim to die. That, combined with the fact that Foxy is the only animatronic that we know of who saw the victims' bodies before they were put into the suits, could make him the most aware out of the original four animatronics. This could further explain his behavior in FNAF 1. According to Foxy Go Go Go, we know that when Foxy was behind his curtain, the purple guy snuck into Pirate's Cove and killed five innocent people. This could explain why he peeks out from his curtain in FNAF 1. He's checking to make sure the purple guy isn't there. This also coincides with one of the first FNAF theories, that Foxy is actually a good guy. Due to his jump scare being remarkably different from the rest of the animatronics, fans had initially speculated that Foxy was not as aggressive as the others, who get up close and personal in their jump scares. Based on his mild jump scare, where he really just looks into the office from a far doorway, it's entirely possible that Foxy is simply checking to see if we're still alive, since the purple guy has killed people behind his back before. Oh, that, um, that, that's a bug. We also know from Sister Location that memories can be shared between spirit and animatronic, which is also explained by Circus Baby in the fourth closet, where she describes having the perspectives of both Elizabeth and Baby during her death. So Foxy seeing Fritz's body before becoming possessed could very well lead to a certain level of awareness that the other animatronics don't have. In Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, Henry says, are they still aware? I hope not. And we explicitly hear from sources like the Silver Eyes trilogy in the FNAF movie that the spirits forgot the details 
details regarding their murder, but Foxy could be the one who remembers. This could explain why he was always twitchy. He's not defined by rigid robotic movements like the others. He's self-aware. The puppet claims that the others are like animals, so we can assume that they aren't extremely aware of their situation. I believe that Foxy, however, has a level of perception comparable to that of the puppet. In FNAF 2, Phone Guy mentions that the new toy animatronics may have a glitch in their systems that causes them to see the night staff as bare endoskeletons in need of a suit. To avoid being seen, he recommends wearing an empty Freddy mask to trick the animatronics into seeing an animatronic rather than an endoskeleton. This simple trick works on all of the animatronics new and old, except for two, Withered Foxy and the Puppet. Interestingly, these two animatronics are similar in that they both see past the Freddy head trick, but are dissimilar in Phone Guy's opinions on them. Phone Guy expresses almost childlike infatuation with Foxy in particular, but states that he never liked that puppet thing. This poses a small threat to my theory. When confessing his negative feelings towards the puppet, his reasoning is partly because it's always thinking. So given that these two animatronics seem to be the same in that way, why does Phone Guy have such polar opinions on these two characters? I have an explanation. In Ultimate Custom Night, the puppet says the others are under my protection, which based on Give Gifts Give Life would be referring to the original animatronics and their spirits. Knowing this, it's possible that after Charlie's death, the puppet had a new objective, to protect the animatronics rather than the kids in the restaurant. Having him always looming over the animatronics against his programming would certainly creep out the staff, who would find his behavior akin to a possessed doll. Foxy, on the other hand, would be keeping his normal routine, except that he would be more aware of his surroundings and always checking on the kids in his show area. So in conclusion, Foxy quirky, puppet creepy. Back to their behavior. Being the only two animatronics who are not fooled by the Freddy mask trick, what makes them so aware? Well, there's one other thing that only Foxy and the puppet share, something unique to the two of them that separates them from the other animatronics in FNAF 2. They both saw their spirit's bodies before becoming possessed. In Security Puppet from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, we see the puppet chase after Charlie Emily only to find the lifeless husk of William's first victim. Similarly, in Foxy Go Go Go, Foxy sees five victims before later becoming one with one of them. Based on their shared experiences and similar behavior in FNAF 2, the puppet's history seems to confirm our theory about Foxy, that he saw the five MCI victims' bodies and gained awareness. In conclusion, Foxy's running in Foxy Go 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 and FNAF 1 tells us why he was withered in the first pizzeria, which also explains why he was too scary for the new restaurant in 1987 and why he was later left out of order in the 1993 location. Finally, evidence from Foxy Go 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 in FNAF 1 and 2 tells us that Foxy has a level of awareness that goes beyond that of the other animatronics, which is also corroborated by the puppet's origin and behavior. So, did we finally bring Foxy's history into the light or are there still mysteries hidden in his story? Also, what do you think about his appearance in Fredbear and Friends? Is it relevant or was it simply a way for Scott to tell us the year? Anyways, until next time, thanks for watching.